Hi guys, welcome back. My house has been incredibly loud today. I mean, we're talking like Dante's Inferno level of loud. Uh, I just put my three-year-old down and the others are watching a movie, so hopefully um, we can get through this without too many interruptions. So this is my 10th graders curriculum picks for the year. Um, and I gotta say, I'm pretty happy with the amount of purple represented. <laughs> Not that that went into any of my decision making, so um, a little bit this one. I'll get into that here in a second, but um, yeah, makes me happy anyway. So this one here, I'll show you this. This is our pick for Bible this year, and I kind of joke that the purple went into the pick the decision, but the purple and the gold caught my attention. I will admit, when I was looking at Rainbow Resource, it it really drew my eye. And um, I read a version of, I can't remember what Bible version I was reading, but it was Isaiah 49. And the second part of that verse is, Behold your God. And it just really touched me. It was one of those times when a verse just kind of reached out and grabbed me. Um, so when I saw this really pretty color and it said, Behold your God, I thought, ooh, I need to, I need to look at that. So, and my daughter has always done CLE for Bible. And I was looking for something a little bit different this year. I really liked the CLE Bible, the, the foundation it's given her. Um, last year, she was able to go on blueletterbible.com, and they taught her how to, how to follow different words in the original language, and um, just gave her some researching tools, which I thought were really helpful. But this year, I wanted a, a more personal experience for her, something that was going to help her reflect a little bit more personally and individually on um, the Word of God. So when I saw this and I clicked on it and looked at some of the, um, why is this not focusing? Uh, table of Contents, there's Unit 1, Knowledge of God. Um, nature of God, the Attributes of God, the Holy Spirit, Person of Christ. And it's just a bit more, um, I'm going to, I hate, I'm going to hate myself for using this word, but emotional, <laughs> but not in like a fake or flaky way, but just putting a little bit of emotion, which well, definitely 100% belongs there um, when you're reading the scriptures as opposed to just um, reading and analyzing on a more um, intellectual basis. And I think, I think that's important and, um, she certainly does that, but I just wanted her curriculum this year to uh, be a little bit more focused on that. It, usually we do Bible four days a week, and then the fifth day um, she watches a video that's been, um, I think she has certain people that she knows she's allowed to watch without um, pre-approval. Um, Beth Moore, Ravi Zacharias, um, Eric Ludy, Priscilla Shire, some of those that... Um, she would watch on a Friday and that was her Friday Bible. This one, I'm not sure how we'll organize it because um, the chapters are pretty short. So this may be like a two day. It depends on how long it takes her. And I will do a um, review of this after we get into school a bit and she's been using it. This also has a teacher's guide, um, but when I bought it, I didn't realize that. Um, I didn't, I didn't look at the related materials. I should have done that. So the teacher's guide does come in a book form or a PDF form. So um, I'll see. I haven't, I haven't purchased that yet. But. Okay. Now, getting into some of the core subjects. For language arts, she's going to be using... Um, whoops. I am sorry about this. Focusing. Illuminating literature when worlds collide for Christian high schools and home schools. Last year she did illuminating, illuminating literature um, characters in crisis. Just, anyway, sorry about that. And I will do a full review of that um, here pretty soon. So if you wanna see that, you can um, subscribe and hit the notification bell um, to see when I post that. But she really loved uh, the first one. Well, they don't go in any order, but the first one she did, which was characters, um, characters in crisis, excuse me. She loved doing that. She really enjoyed uh, the way that the book approaches reading and analyzing literature. Some of the books she didn't love to sit and read. She enjoyed um, analyzing and reading about them. So it made it less like frustrating when she was reading a book that she didn't necessarily love to read. Um, so I'll show you in this a little bit. Let's go to... 
the um, course philosophy, which I think is really important. And one of the things I really love about this course, um, so you can see here it says, the course philosophy is that these books are written by flawed humans who struggled with or gave in to sin and their sin nature, who may or may not have been Christians, whose stories may or may not agree with the truths written in the Bible, but reflect some redeeming truth and are therefore worth reading. While literature can be uplifting and spur us to greatness, it also can be a disturbing reflection of our fallen state. These books are not sacred. There's no need to revere them. Enjoy them. Find pleasure in them. Pick them apart. Find the flaws in thinking and worldview. Ponder changing path ponder changing a passage or an ending, learn from them, copy our favorite passages, and try to initiate, sorry, imitate them, and love or hate the characters. And I really like her approach to this, um, putting everything in perspective and um, looking at the good and the bad and um, everything in between. I remember when she did, um, what book was it last year? Um, they did Shakespeare last year, um, a Midsummer Night's Dream, and she was very, in the teacher's manual, she got into, like, some of the references in the book, um, would go, she said they'd go right over the student's head, so she was okay with reading that one, and she wasn't going to draw attention to any of it, and just let it, you know, Shakespeare language, if it's not explained to you a lot of it, you're not going to get, so, um, I really liked that about that. Now, the books in this one that you read are, um, uh, Puddin, Head Wilson, War of the Worlds, The Friendly Persuasion, Peter Pan, Fahrenheit 451, and The Screwtape Letters. And let's see if I can find, it's in the teacher's guide. Um, I'll, I should just do, I will, I will do a review of the other one that goes into a little bit more detail, because there is a lot to this curriculum. Um, but here's one of the, one of the grading, um, grids she has. So she has how many points for, yes, I read it online literary terms quiz, participation in opinion questions online, quality of participation discussions, focus, successful completion of lessons, um, completion of activity, finished reading the book, and then total grade. So she has it really broken down very well. Um, and I'll show you real quick. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Page 75, I had it marked so that I would remember. Here we go. This is talking about, this is kind of how she teaches the kids to analyze. I think my daughter's only complaint, let me see if I can get this to focus, was that sometimes she couldn't just read and enjoy the stories that she was reading. Not even part of this, but like in her daily reading because she was so busy analyzing from what she learned here. Um, Here's just a sample. Creating an empathetic character is the legitimate work of a careful author. The legitimate work of a careful reader is to be discerning. So it's really kind of a neat... She really teaches you to be a good reader, uh, um, an attentive reader, and analyze what you're reading, the good, the bad, you know, and sort of uh, applying it to your own worldview. And hers as well as ours is Christian worldview. So I appreciate that she's coming from the same perspective. She's also using Sharon Watson for teaching uh, or for writing fiction in high school. Um, this was one of her requests. One of her dreams is to be an author. Um, so she's going to be doing this. I haven't really gotten into it a lot to look at it yet. I did online before I ordered it. But since we really enjoyed Sharon Watson's literature, um, I was okay um, ordering it at her request without too much research. This is a half year course. She also has teaching nonfiction or write, excuse me, writing nonfiction in high school, and that's a year long course. And again, I will once we get into this, I'll do a more full review of how that is um, to use. And one of her requests this year was a little bit of a spelling refresher. Um, she's not super confident in that. Um, I wouldn't say she's a terrible speller myself, um, reading what she writes, but she just wanted to be a little more confident. So I found this Apples 2 Daily Phonics Drills for Secondary Students. So it's specifically for um, high schoolers and older students. So it's not like childish, um, she's not having to go to some childish spelling lesson, you know, and it's, it's 
you can see it's much uh, higher level of reading in sentences that they're using while teaching some of these spellings. And this is Christian as well. Um, where did I just see that? Oh, yeah, so there you go. There's scripture that they're using um, their spelling words in. So this is very um, biblically based. Not everything is um, a scripture reference, but um, they're all going to be good and meaningful. So I like that as well. Oh, there it says, Bible-based phonics drills for secondary students. And it's designed for the older students. So this will just give her a little more confidence. Um, refresh her on some of the rules she may have forgotten, and some of the details um, that she's that she's lost. And there has addre envelope addressing. And there was also check writing in here, too, which I thought was interesting. Okay, so she is also doing, do, 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 for history... A friend of mine gave me this uh, years and years ago, several years ago, when her son was in high school. I see my son put a pen in there. Um, and he used this preparing for the AP United States History Exam to do just what it says, um, prepare for the AP History Exam. And um, so she gave this to me when he was done with it, and I just put it away and didn't think much of it. This year, our homeschool group, um, one of the moms is teaching Oklahoma history. So... Um, I thought it would be a great year to do um, American history along with it um, for high school. So I pulled, I thought, you know, I think I have something for that. So I pulled this out and it's really a condensed history um, textbook. It has chapters, it has questions, it has the answers to the questions, and then even at the, at the end it has some practice tests. And then the answers to those practice tests. So what we're going to do, I dropped my paper, uh, for history, sorry about that, is the, as, um, we're going to use this as our spine. And then we're going to add in documentaries, um, historical fiction, and some biographies to kind of um, fill it out. My daughter would rather sit and read biographies and especially historical fiction and historical nonfiction um, then sit with the textbook and we haven't done textbook history in the past we've done mystery of history um, she did Stowball's history last year um, we've done our own which I plan to post pretty soon on some uh, elementary history that we put together based on a night at the museum movie um, and she's just done a lot of reading she likes to read it's her it's her favorite way to learn about history and she loves the stories more than you know, studying these facts. So I thought, well, this will be a good spine. Um, it'll give her all of the specific details that um, are important to know at this level, and yet um, we're not going to be tied down to a daily, really intense textbook type of learning. And then if she decides she wants to take the AP history exam, she can. Now, we can't count this as AP on her transcripts unless we put together... Um, a whole plan, curriculum plan, and send that in to the AP, you know, whoever does that, I forget, um, thing. But I'm not super worried about that, or just, you know, this is just what we had, and I thought it would be a really great condensed way to, to learn all those things she needs and still have time to do the fun stuff with history. And there is a lot of fun stuff. I, I haven't picked out my books for that, the books that we'll be using. Um, I'm thinking about going on Pinterest. If you have a homeschool Pinterest um, page, board, I guess it's called, um, link it in the description bar. And I don't care if it's 10th grade, kindergarten. I, my kids range from um, three years old up to 10th grade. So if you have one, I would love to follow you on that. So post a link in the um, comments so I can go see what you're using. Um, this is our science. This is classic science. We did this, she actually did this for fourth grade science because he has one of them for free and it's all printed. He doesn't have any, um, you can't purchase it already printed. And my printer, actually I bought this, this one, and because um, it's only the, the first year that's free. Um, the day I bought this, my printer decided to break. <laughs> and this is only nine weeks worth and I hadn't printed five pages before it, it broke on me 
and so I had to go out and buy a new printer, which was painful, but anyway, um, <laughs> that's another story. Uh, so she's familiar with this. It's fun. Um, he's a little bit silly. He doesn't take it too seriously. What I will say, though, is this is a secular science course. It is not a biblical-based science course. We do tons of talking about science and scripture and how, um, you know, God's the creator, so everything that follow, falls into his creation is under his authority, his control. And we talk a lot about um, the scientists worldview some of them not all of them um the atheist worldview and their view of science and the way they approach science um so she is um she understands how to sort of combine the two the the putting science under a christian worldview and that not all scientists do that we also watch a video um quite often more often than she would like that talks about um why there are no baby dinosaurs. And it sort of shows the fallacy of um, science sometimes, not that science is bad and our scientific research is, is bad, but it shows that scientists can think they have it all correct and they are dead wrong. Um, so it teaches her to sort of think critically. So I have no problem with using a um, science that is not biblically based however I've gone through this level to make sure there's nothing like in your face atheist angry atheist type thing it's, it's really not it's, it's just the science there's no trying to disprove anything or focus on you know any kind of atheism or anything so I'm comfortable with it and it has these little uh, like comics throughout so I'm hoping since we're doing advanced chemistry um, that it will kind of relax the the pressure on that so we printed it out and here I'll show you the table of contents um, they have great previews on his website and I will link to the website and I'll link to um, uh, I'll have a list of all these in the description bar and some links um, so you can you can preview all of this in the in the, on the website, but you can see um, sort of what they'll be studying. And all of the experiments are done in the kitchen. So I think um, like one week they're making pasta sauce, the next week they're making a meal with pasta, and so you don't need a, a crazy expensive lab kit to go with this, which was a huge huge plus for me. I mean. Some of those lab kits are more than we pay for a year's worth for the three kids that we have in school. So that was a plus. Um, yeah, see here, there's just little funny things to kind of keep them. It's 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 lighthearted. It teaches, but it's not like super intense. Um, I got smart after I don't know how many chapters and stopped printing the chapter pages and just wrote it because that's a waste of ink. And there is a teacher's manual. I did not print the teacher's manual. I'll show you what I did. Um, this is kind of her uh, days. I kind of, I just kind of wrote some out just to see what her, her year was going to look like. But um, So the teacher's manual has the daily assignments. So what I did um, here, I just wrote it because I was not going to print out the teacher's manual. It just seemed like a whole lot of waste of ink and paper. So I just went through, this did not take me long at all. Oh, there's not even, uh, there's some definitions that she needed. Lab day, quiz, um, check your answers and read through lab. So I just wrote it out instead of printing it out um, to make it a little bit cheaper for me. And I did keep, the, I did put the answer keys in here. Um, she's my student that I, I know she can sit out here and do that without peeking. Um, my seven-year-old, eight, almost eight-year-old is not that way. So <laughs> probably wouldn't do that for him. But for her, we're going to, I don't worry too much about that. Um, there's something else. I was, oh, uh, okay. I had to get my thoughts together there for a second. This is all self-taught. 
So the teacher's manual, while it had um, things in it I needed to tell her to do, there was no instruction in the teacher's manual. It was all done, um, it's all done in the, in the basic uh, student book. So they can do this all on their own with just, um, oh here, here, let's show you a lab. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo, with minimal help from you. Okay, so here is the kitchen lab. They should have already gone through it. Here are the uh, ingredients. So this is all you need for this week for their lab. And you get to eat. So, you know, it's just part of your grocery budget, really. Do, 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 do. There we go. And this is a three to four day um, curriculum. Some weeks there are three days, some weeks there are four days. So there will always be at least one day a week where you don't have to do science, which is great if you do co-op. Um, or something like that, or want to spend a day working on um, something else a little bit more intensely. Okay, so for math, this is the last thing. She is using Life of Fred. We used, well, she used CLE up until pre-algebra. Pre when she hit pre-algebra, um, I really wanted to make sure that what she used was going to take her all the way through. I know a lot of people, there's like programs where the algebra is great, but the geometry is weak or vice versa. Um, CLE, when I was looking at it, didn't have all of their higher math updated. So um, I, I kind of reevaluated. And she had used Life of Fred on and off before, just along with CLE. So um, I was familiar with it. And it had a great reviews. Um, I checked it out and told her we would start with it and then if she had problems um, we would switch you know pretty quickly so we weren't wasting a lot of time so we started with the pre-algebra series i can't remember what that is called on fred i'll, I'll um, put his link in the description bar though so you can check that out um, but she has done extremely well switching from cle to life of fred for pre-algebra it's it's very thorough the teaching um, she hasn't had any trouble um, understanding the um, lessons or anything. We did have one lesson where we had to email Dr. Schmidt. She sent him an email because she was really stuck. He emailed back within 20 minutes. She still didn't quite understand, so she rephrased her question in context from with the answer that he sent back. and. It was like, oh, he said, oh, I know where you're coming from now. I know where you're stuck. And he explained it again um, with a little bit more understanding of where and why she was stuck. And it clicked like that. So he is um, accessible for your kids if they have any questions. And he's really quick to answer. So I love that about Life of Fred. Um, it's one of my favorite things about this curriculum. I know if she ever has trouble um, he's an email or a phone call away. He has his phone number in the books as well. So really easy to get some help. One thing though that has been essential for her doing well in this is the Zillions books. We have bought the Zillions books for all of them. Um, part of the reason it's been essential is because it has extra practice, but also there's been times where she hasn't totally understood and she's been doing the same thing wrong but wasn't sure how to fix it or what she was doing wrong and he has a little bit he explains it again in this and sometimes he'll explain it just with enough of a different language and how he's explaining it um, shows a little bit more than what he does in the other book just something extra that makes it click and the light bulb goes on and it's like oh now I get it so um, this has been really important for that and um, so what what we've done and I will say she doesn't do the zillions for every lesson um, this one the lessons have taken her up to three hours for a single lesson when she's really learning something new so what we've started doing at the end of last year and we'll continue to do is 40 minutes of Life of Fred and then at the end of the day or in the evening when she feels like it she does 20 million 20 minutes usually in the zillions um, of practice problems so she can get some of that in um, and that has been our plan and unless we have a really um, busy day and something else that's what it's 40 minutes and then later on in the day 20 minutes so it's it's broken up a little bit 
four and she's not totally overwhelmed with math. I mean, there are days that nobody wants to do math for that many hours um, a day unless you love math. So um, that's how we've done it. If you have any questions, because I think that's it. Oh, she's doing Duolingo um, Irish or um, we have a friend who has a Latin program we may be getting, which means we may be switching to Latin, which probably won't make her happy, but you know. That's how it goes. Um, but if you have any questions, let me know. Um, I will be showing um, these a little bit up close and personal um, in their own video. So if you have any specific questions about any of them or one you want to see soon, because I know um, people are going to be ordering curriculum, you can let me know in the comment section. I will be happy to do that. I'll have links and a list of everything we're using in the description bar, so you can click there. Um, and just, yeah, just stop by and say hi in the comments. We will see you next time, guys. Happy homeschooling. Sorry, guys. Bonus comment or bonus uh, content for those of you who stuck around when I, after I said I was done. Um, in addition to this science, one of the things we're going to add this year, since she is doing a science with a um, non-Christian worldview, is we're going to add John Lennox's book, Can, Silent, Can Science Explain Everything? Um, to her required reading. John Lennox works for the Ravi Zacharias International Ministries, if you're familiar with that. And um, he is a scientist with a Christian worldview, and he does a great job of explaining how science and Christianity complement each other and that science is all God, um, and, and it shouldn't be separated. So she's going to be required to read that, and that'll help solidify everything we've talked to her about. He also has lots of videos um, if you don't necessarily want um, the book, but he has tons of videos. Well, maybe not tons, but he has a lot of videos on YouTube that you can look up, some podcasts and things like that. So I'll have that in the description bar as well. We'll see you next time, guys.